previous uh, ones, we were expected to uh, to do first the uh, ED analysis on the on the given data. So I have uh, I have I've checked uh, the missing values uh, on the given data sets, and I have found that uh, there were no missing uh, values on the data set, which uh, was good. Uh, so the the overview of the the given data sets is uh, as shown here uh, in this document. The fraud da data sets uh, contains about 150,000 uh, rows, about 150,000 rows with uh, 11 columns. And here are the columns uh, which are numerical. And uh, here are the columns which are categorical. And there are also edit uh, columns which are sign up time and purchase time. And the dates range uh, in the data sets uh, here are uh, as shown below. Uh, it's uh, almost uh, one year uh, data sets, I guess. So uh, I have checked also the data data overview for the IP address, IP address data sets. Uh, the IP address data sets contain about uh, 138,000 uh, roads with three columns, uh, which are lower bound IP address and upper bound uh, IP address, which are numerical, and uh, one categorical uh, column, which is uh, country. So after I did uh, I did this, I have uh, done the univariate analysis uh, on on each variables. Uh, I I have uh, done for 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 source. I I get that SEO and ads um, uh, advertisements uh, are the most sources for most uh, purchases. Uh, and uh, for browsers, most uh, customers use Chrome and Edge. Uh, and Safari and Firefox. Uh, Opera is the, the least used one. Uh, and most uh, purchases are, are main uh, here for main. And for uh, for uh, for the class, uh, as you see here, most uh, purchases are non non fraud fraudulent. Uh, but there are some significant transactions which are detected as fraud, uh, as shown here. And here is uh, the the purchase value. The purchase value is uh, most purchase values are ranging from uh, twenty to sixty. Uh, as you see here, there are a few value uh, which have more than uh, hundred, uh, so there were no high high value of uh, purchase. Uh, and for uh, the age of the customer who are making purchase, most most customers are in the age between twenty and uh, fifty. For the one, uh, then after I did the univariant analysis, I have. And the bivariant analysis, and I then um, bivariant analysis between the purchase value and uh, uh, purchase time. And as you see here, uh, the purchase uh, value is somehow uniform uh, with some uh, spikes in, uh, in some uh, on some uh, time. It's almost, uh, we can say it's almost uniform. And I have also uh, done some uh, uh, some bivariant analysis between purchase value and source. As you see, uh, purchase value, uh, which are, uh, uh, their sources are from advertisement, uh, are higher, and also from SEO are higher, which also makes sense because their count uh, is also higher uh, as we see it in the univariant analysis. 
the same with uh, the browser uh, the, the browser also the same and uh, then i did yeah for the gender part also the male purchase uh, amount is higher uh, this also make uh, sense because the number of uh, uh, male customer on the data set is greater than uh, from uh, females so i've done this and then i merged the fraud uh, and ip address ip address data sets based on uh, ip address and um, i have merged that and i have added the country column uh, on the new merged data set and after i did that i have checked for the missing values and uh, i get about 1.49 percent missing values on the merged data sets and i have uh, handed that missing value by replacing it with unknown uh, the, the unknown uh, value for the country i have done that uh, after that i have uh, i have i have uh, calculated some uh, new futures uh, as it was suggested by uh, on on the challenge document so i have calculated the transaction frequency uh, i have counted the number of transaction per user uh, i have also calculated the transaction velocity uh, i subtracted the the first time purchase of uh, the the customer from uh, the most recent one and i have calculated this transaction velocity also i have I've calculated the sign up hour day uh, day of the week and the same for the purchase too then after i did that uh, on the challenge document this encoding category uh, categorical future were, were uh, were put it ne next to normalization and scaling, but I have I have done that uh, prior to this normalization and scaling because I want to uh, normalize and scale the the converted uh, categorical uh, futures too. Uh, so I have done the encoding part earlier here, uh, and I have converted using a label label encoder. Then I did the normalization and the scaling using minmax min max scalar. Uh, then I moved to the model building and the training. Uh, for uh, for the model uh, uh, building and training, uh, I have split the data uh, into 85, I mean 80% 80 for training and 20 for testing. Uh, then I checked for uh, the for balanced data data sets uh, uh, to make sure that each uh, each uh, I mean the test and the training data sets contain uh, you know so somehow balanced uh, amount of fraud and non fraud transactions. So I have checked that and found uh, these results in the training uh, data sets. These are the number of transactions that are non fraud and these are fraud transaction and for the test i have found these are the number of non fraud transaction and these are the number of fraud cases so somehow i i, I believe this is somehow balanced so i have checked that then i move to the model selection part uh, for the machine learning algorithms uh, as it was suggested on the challenge document i have selected all of them the logistic regression Decision tree classifier and random forest and gradient boost classifier. I have used uh, that. And for uh, neural network, I have used the multilayer perception and uh, LSTM uh, model. Uh, I have I have tried uh, both. So I have chose this LSTM because I thought I uh, somehow the purchase time is uh, somehow sequential and. Uh, maybe using this uh, model makes sense for this uh, for this case i have uh, that's why i use i use the lst uh, so then i use uh, the ml flow for for uh, 
for logging and as you see here uh, you might not be see it clearly but here are the the accuracy the metrics for each model here is for uh, logistic regression decision tree random forest gradient boosting yeah material perceptron and for uh, LSTM. Uh, here are the parameters I used along with the, the metrics for each model. And this is the summary of the model evaluation for each model I have trained. Then I did the model ex explainability. Uh, this, I actually, the, it worked only for, uh, for me, it, it worked only for logistic regression. So this was the result uh, I did uh, as uh, it's shown on this picture. These features uh, shown on the above uh, has uh, positive influence on, uh, on the model uh, other than uh, the, the, the below, the below values. Uh, actually, I I didn't um, got enough time. The link was closed, and I didn't got enough time to include the conclusion in the uh, recommendation or future work here. Uh, but I have also done the the, the task four, uh, even though I didn't submit it because since it was uh, closed, the submission link the submission link was closed. But let me show you the the front end I have made for for this project. I have I have saw yeah, the the presentation yeah yeah used used uh, yeah. Well, the React yeah. for for the front end and I have also used the uh, React and material uh, right. UI to implement uh, the front end. So here, here is the, the front end of my application. Uh, so you can enter the user ID here. Somehow enter the date here. Mm. Here, purchase value, device ID something. Source uh, maybe is here. User Chrome and H just um, just run the my carries in this prediction. Now, so it. Uh, it detected this uh, activity as cloud. Uh, we can we can try another one, maybe. I don't know. Maybe we can try, but uh, this is uh, this is my presentation. I think if you have questions so far, I can I cannot skip it now. Okay. Not me. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, can go until then. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, you can go. Okay. Uh thank you. Uh Abraham, it, it was good. Uh, I, I think you, you have tried all the uh, tasks that was asked, and it was great. Um, I have a couple of questions and comments. Um, I, it, uh, on the front end, uh, as you can see, you used an IP address, uh, a device ID, uh, and a country. Uh, 
the, the, the purpose of merging the uh, fraud detection data in the IP to country data is to convert the IPs into country, right? Uh, so for your model, if you include country, you don't need to use IP address because they, they are the same, right? Uh, and also device ID, um, it, it doesn't, uh, maybe from the explainability, you can see that the, the device ID, uh, the IP address, they, they have low um, uh, influence on the, the, the model, right? So they, it, it, it would be good if you remove those. Uh, and yeah, why is 111111 correspond to Ethiopia? Uh, because, sorry, uh, the IP address for a country has an upper bound and a lower bound limit, right? So are you sure that 1111 uh, lies in... Uh, I say this because the, the, the a prediction result is a fraudulent activity, and maybe that's because it's influenced by the IP address that you just uh, entered, because the uh, bound for Ethiopia IP address might, uh, I, I hope you get the idea. That number, you just put it randomly, or do you know, or are you sure that's uh, an IP address in Ethiopia? Uh, that's just uh, a suggestion. And the other one is, uh, in your uh, comparison for the accuracies, uh, I saw that the LSTM uh, is a bit low. Uh, is there any reason behind it? Why is it uh, very low? Um, yeah, and for the, the scaling, uh, you, you used min max, right? Do you have um, a reason for that too? Why, why not? Uh, the other uh, scaling algorithms. Yeah, that, that's all I have. Thank you. But it was great. Okay, thank you, Yaya. Yeah, yeah. uh, so for uh, uh, for the IP address, I, I, I'm I just uh, using it just uh, randomly as, uh, as an example. You're right, this IP address might, might not be an Ethiopian. Uh, Maybe uh, I'll try to uh, to do some realistic uh, example uh, if we have time for the minimal uh, scalar. Um, I I don't have any particular uh, reason for using it. Mm -hmm. I am using it because it uh, I, I I believe it is suggested on the challenge document, but I. No. To, to tell the okay. truth, I don't have any specific reason, but I will check uh, uh, maybe if there are use cases to uh, to use different uh, scalars for uh, for different scenarios. Mm -hmm. I'll check on that. And uh, the fields I have uh, used in this uh, front end, uh, I have used. I I know I thought they might they might not uh, make sense, but I. The reason I want to use them exactly like this is these are the the, the fields uh, of the merged uh, my merged data set. So uh, this is the, the data sets I used to train uh, my model. So my model expects all uh, all of these uh, fields. Uh, and also there there are some future engineering uh, that that will be done uh, in the background, but uh, it expects all these uh, fields. That's why I, I use them. I, as you are suggested, uh, I can uh, remove some of them and uh, you know optimize it uh, a bit. Uh, I I accept that. Uh, and uh, the the result for the um, LSTM uh, for the model. The result for LSTM is low yeah but that can be yeah due to uh you know it can be due to many factors because it can be the obviously the deep learning modules uh, maybe i can i can uh, i'm speaking now my 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 
my opinions. So it can be due to the number of epochs I used. I used only five. Uh, five. Uh, also, the um, the data, the training data, uh, these deep learning models. I believe they they need more more data to be trained on. So the number of data maybe it is uh, very small for for for, uh, for this model. So the result uh, is maybe related to related to this. So this uh, these are my suggestion. And uh, is there any other question I left to answer? Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's that's all good. Uh, just the IP address is the country. The country is the IP address. Yeah, that, that's why I said it's like redundant, right? The IP address represents the country. So if you have, if you if you convert the IP address into a country, uh, you don't need the IP address. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It, it, uh, uh, yeah. Thank you. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. So uh, you see, I uh, I can drop the IP address or the the country before I don't, I don't need to use uh, both of them right you only use the the country right. because the the ip address uh between the lower and the upper any ip address in that re, uh, interval will represent a country so before you do the training you you can drop the ip address the uh, id etc yeah all okay. right okay yeah yeah thank you I just have a quick question for Ram. And that was a great presentation. I just want to ask you: um, Have you tried to actually understand each each features in the explainability part? So uh, I've heard you mention that it only works for you on the randomness part. So uh, I mean, for in the logistic regression part. So maybe using that to have you tried to understand each features and also uh, in in your form have you tried to actually show why the fraudulent activity is detected so the main reason we we want you guys to understand the explainability part is you have to explain your result you just uh, can't say uh, it is fraudulent and stop you, you need to understand the model enough to explain to explain why it is deciding in that way or why why it is relying in that answer i just want to uh, i just want you to explain that part okay yeah that uh, is a good question uh, yeah i'm having actually a bit difficulty understanding this uh, task uh, three, so I'm not sure I can uh, provide uh, good, uh, or I can, I, I, I'm not sure I can say I understand it uh, all, uh, the model explainability part, but somehow I, I read some, and uh, I have put it here that uh, these uh, values, future values, which are high indicates that they uh, affect the model uh, positively and uh, the future value which are low uh, have uh, low low influence on the model this is the information uh, i i am able to get uh, for now uh, but i i am not uh, understanding uh, other other than this, I can't uh, you know deeply ex uh, explain the model uh, well. Okay, uh, so um, I just want you to uh, check and re-implement this part. So, for example, let's say uh, just omit the IP address part and include the country part. So maybe then try your model because I think IP address is really affecting it. Okay, I will try uh, and yeah, try yeah, to understand yeah. this better. Okay, thank okay. you. And great presentation. Thank okay, thank you. Hero, you can. Yeah, I think uh, 
before we end, I, I know I just, I just joined uh, the session, but uh, on the explainability part, uh, so you only did uh, the uh, summary plot, or have you done the first plot and the distribution plot? Or sharp at least? I have only done this, the, the summary plot. I, I, I didn't do uh, the, the rest. Uh, can I know why? Like, uh, why didn't you do it? Actually, uh, I didn't get enough time, so I just uh, quickly moved to the task four. Uh, so since this uh, this uh, explainability um, tasks take too much time to try, uh, I I didn't try try the the rest. I I heard you 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 explained. Uh, on the stand up, you you you, you say the 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 force and the other other also. I think the line made it. Yeah. I didn't try try that due to I think time. I will I'll try to to do them uh, on my own. Okay. Uh, the reason I asked is because like there are uh, one line line of code, uh, especially for uh, the sharp code the sharp like plots, so it, it wouldn't take that much time, but it would be beneficial for you to understand because uh, the declaration that Nathaniel asked uh, is going to, uh, you have to know that answer when you build a model, because you have to be able to explain uh, why the result of the prediction is uh, presented that way, right? So when, when you say so, someone is uh, like a fraud, you need to explain which features uh, have contributed for that decision or for that prediction. So explainability is going to help you with that. Um, so uh, like, I know it's a bit computational intensive and uh, like uh, some of the students as attorneys has come forward and said that uh, their co computational uh, competency is not enough. But uh, like you have to do it for at least one, at least for the logic regression because it's not that much computation intensive. You have to do it at least for that one and try to explain the results. Like you have to, like you have to be able to interpret the the, the results. I think on the session we have seen an, an example, right? For each uh, plot, we have then uh, the, the like we have seen the plot and we have seen how it's interpreted. So. You have to try to do that on your own because you need to, uh, like, uh, like you, you you need to be sure or be confident about what you're doing by looking at the experiments. Uh, okay, uh, that's it for for me, and thank you for presenting. Okay, uh, thank you, Kerot. I will I will try to understand and try that uh, for the future. Thank you, thank you. But, uh, no, I don't have any more questions. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Thank so, yeah, I think we can end the session here. I don't also have a question, Abraham. And really, thank you for being here as usual. Goodbye, everyone.